Hey everyone, and welcome back to this Python web scraping course. Now that we've gone over some ethical concerns and learned about robots.txt, we are ready to go ahead and download the HTML page that we're going to be scraping off of. So in this course, we're going to be scraping off of this Wikipedia article. And before we actually get into beautiful soup, we're going to need to take a look at the Python request library. And in particular, we're going to need to look at how to not only request this HTML, but save it to our hard drive so that we don't have to keep requesting it every time we run our program. This is again part of web scraping ethics. We want to minimize the number of requests that we are making to a host server. So if we only have a single page, we know exactly what page that is that we want, what we can do is request that page once and then write it to our hard drive. And then from there, we can use beautiful soup to read from this local file rather than having to request the same HTML over and over again. So first, we're going to take a look at how to do that. So before we do anything, we're going to need to import the libraries that we're going to be using for this course. So to import beautiful soup, I'm going to go from BS4, import beautiful soup. Then for issuing requests, we're going to import requests. And there's actually one more library we're going to be using later on in the course. So we can go ahead and import now so we don't have to do it later. Uh, it's a library for regular expressions in Python. And it's OK if you're not familiar with what those are at this point. We will get to it. But this is a Python standard library module, so no need to install anything. We're just going to do import re. All right. And so if your import statements look like this now, you are good to go. And we will go ahead and issue our git request. So we will wrap this into a function in a little bit. But first, we're just going to do our normal git request and make sure that we're getting the right output before we wrap it into a function and save it to our hard drive. So we're going to create a variable and call it response. And into this, we will save the result of our request.git. And we will place in the parameters for our git request a string containing the URL of the Wikipedia article that we would like to pull down. So I have pasted that in there. And to test this out, to test this out, we can go ahead and print our response and print the text content, so dot text of our response, just to make sure we're getting the right stuff. So I'll go ahead and run this. Okay, and it looks like we have successfully printed out some content from this page. Okay. We've successfully grabbed our response, but now we'd like a way to make sure that every time we run this program, we don't have to issue the request again. So for that, I'm going to encapsulate this code inside of a function and add some logic to save our HTML file to our hard drive. Okay, so I'm going to create a function right here. We'll just call it git HTML. And we'll take a URL and a path. The path will represent where on our hard drive we want to save the HTML to. And the URL is, of course, the URL of the site we would like. So I will place this line inside of here. And of course, we will change out our hard-coded URL for our URL parameter. So we can get rid of this for now. And so now that we have our response, we would like to write it to a file. So if we haven't written a so if you haven't written to a file in Python before, it's fairly straightforward, and this is the syntax to do it. So it uses a with statement, which is fairly uncommon, is usually used for writing things to files like this. Basically what this does is it makes sure that whatever runs after it will be sort of properly cleaned up. So the file will not be left open by Python. So we do with 
open, this will open up a new file at the path that we have specified in our function. And we're going to pass a parameter, a w. This stands for write. So we're going to be writing to this file. And we're going to specify an encoding. So normally we would not have to do this, but beautiful soup tends to like UTF-8 encoding. It can have some issues with other kinds of encoding, and so we want to make sure we don't run into those when we're loading the HTML that we have written. So just to be safe, we're going to specify that our encoding is UTF-8. And so all of this is going to be as a variable f. This will represent our file object, our open file that we've created here. And then all we have to do is call our files write function, so f.write. And in there, we will put the text of our response. So here we are. We are writing the response text that we got from our get request into this file that we have opened at whatever path we have specified. And we'll take a look at how to use it in the following video. Hey again, in this video we'll be continuing and wrapping up our process of saving and loading an HTML page. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. So now that we have our function defined, we can go ahead and try the following. So we can call get HTML and we will place in our URL our um, bristlecone opine Wikipedia article of course, not inside of our, oh, oops. Oh, it wasn't just that on my clipboard. Here we go. So all we need is the string. And then we want a path. And so this will depend on your particular file structure. So you're welcome to save this wherever in your hard drive makes sense for you, as long as you remember it and can access it later on in the course as we load this HTML into our program. Um, so for me, I am going to save it to a folder that I've created inside of my directory that I have called HTML documents. And we will just call this, let's say, bristlecone.html. And with that, we should be able to save this HTML to our folder. Okay, so let's see if this works. Okay, well, it seems to have not thrown an error. So we can go ahead and check out our folder and see what we have. If we go here into HTML docs, there we go. We see we have a new HTML file that we have downloaded. And if we open it, if we open it here, we can see that we have now got the entire contents of this page and it's now being parsed in this nice HTML locally inside of VS Code. And so in the future, when we are creating our beautiful soup object and hoping to scrape this, we can just pull directly from this file and we will not have to burden Wikipedia's servers any further with our requests. So let me switch back to let me switch back to our other file. And now that we have this downloaded, we can go ahead and try and open it. So we can comment this out now that we have it downloaded. And we're going to go ahead and try and open our file and load it into Beautiful Soup. So to open a file, it's going to be a similar syntax to writing to the file. So we're going to do with open. And we know that the path that we want is uh, slash, for me at least, you'll have to supply the year, whatever path that you save the file to, will be slash HTML documents, uh, bristlecone.html. And rather than the W for write, when we're writing to a file, we're going to want to specify an R, and this stands for reading, uh, read only. We only want to read the contents, we don't want to change the contents of this file. And Again, we are specifying our encoding as UTF-8. So this is as F. We will create a new variable. We'll call it HTML. And this will just be 
the contents of the file that we can get through this file function that's called read. So all this will do is read the contents of that file into this variable. And then from here, we can use this variable to actually create a beautiful soup object and we will be ready to go. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to create a new variable, call it soup. And it is a new beautiful soup object. We're passing in our HTML variable that we have created. And we want to specify our HTML parser for good measure. And let's take a look and make sure that this works. Okay, so here we go. Uh, it's printing out the title tag from our article. So it looks like we have successfully loaded the article that we have saved from Wikipedia into Beautiful Soup. And so this will work exactly, um, exactly as if we had, uh, we had gotten it. It's, it's the, exactly the same content. So this is a very important thing to keep in mind, especially if you embark on a more complex web scraping project, you wanna make sure when possible to do as few requests to the server in real time as possible. And if you can save all of the HTML that you need locally, and then just scrape uh, scrape from the local file instead, it's, it's, easier, it's easier for you. You don't have to rely on internet connection uh, it'll be faster, and uh, we're not burdening the host servers of whatever site we're scraping from.